Now I would invite my colleague uh, Francesco Ceccarelli, which is a professor, school professor of history of architecture in my department at the University of Bologna. Um, thank you, Francesco, for joining us. I'm really pleased to have the possibility to hear you <laughs> telling us about uh, this uh, uh, relationship between uh, the important buildings of uh, the university and the city. Uh, Francesco has a, a very uh, deep knowledge of the history of this uh, city. He also was involved in the process of uh, the acknowledgement of the um, uh, UNESCO uh, acknowledgement of the porticos of the arcades of Bologna. So thank you for joining us uh, and welcome here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Simone. And uh, uh, good morning to all and welcome to Bologna and welcome to Palazzo Poggi, uh, which is the symbolic and uh, administrative and cultural headquarters of our university. Here is the rector office, uh, as well as some of the most significant museums collection in the city. Today I will provide you with a very brief historical and architectural overview that I hope can help you orient yourselves in the Bolognese context and understand the delicate link between the university and the city which is almost a thousand years uh, long. Uh, as you know well, uh, Bologna was the first, uh, Bologna University was the first to be founded in Europe sometimes at the end of the 11th century. In uh, its earliest phase, uh, the Bolognese studio, this was the name of the university at uh, the origins, uh, did not leave a mark on the physical and urbanistic structure of the city. Uh, the studio was a private and autonomous initiative of the professors and uh, the students. Even though uh, in the earliest phases there was no proper and representative university building, two specific areas of the city uh, gradually specialized around university activities. In particular, the artisti, that is professor of uh, rhetoric, philosophy, medicine, mathematics, uh, concentrated most in the area west of the ancient Roman city center, while the legisti, uh, that is professor of civil uh, canon law, uh, gathered primarily in the southeast of the city. Uh, some university professors were shipped in the church of uh, uh, San Domenico, while others chose at their devotional home the church of San Francesco, San Domenico and San Francesco. These preferences are legible in the funerary monuments of the scholars, such as Rolandino dei Passeggeri, who was buried at the Dominican monastery, or the Accursi, who were laid to rest in the Franciscan one. These peculiar tombs, restored in 1888, have pro-humanist connotation and are formally related to uh, sepulchral monuments of uh, uh, the Roman imperial here. Here uh, are reconfigured as medieval mausoleums. Professor and students played a crucial role in the development of the medieval city, be for economic or urbanistic reasons. Between the 12th and 14th centuries, Bologna grew more quickly than other European cities. In any case, Bologna did not become a major European city because of the studio, but rather it had the studio because the city was experiencing a great economic and cultural boom since the beginning of the 11th century. The first architectural structures built specifically for the university first appeared in the 14th century. These were colleges, uh, housing students from various nations. The colleges were paid by those nations, including the Hungarians, the Slavs, the Swiss, the Spanish. Between the 13th and 17th century, 24 national colleges were built in Bologna. Among these, the Spanish college is still fu fully functional. This one uh, this is one of the most interesting structures of its type built in medieval Europe. Constructed in 1365, the Spanish college was inspired by 13th century Carthusian monastic architecture. 
It was designed by the architect Gattapone as a self-sufficient microcosm separated from the rest of the city by a high wall. Inside, the college is organized spatially in a very regular manner, which room, uh, with rooms distributed along two floors with ample lodges and lower uh, arches. Uh, the plan is very clear with the, the rectangular uh, courtyard designed as a Roman domus. There is a sort of a Gothic church of St. Clement actually aligned with the entrance. This scheme had great success in later university architecture in both Spain and Italy and all over Europe. In the early decades of the 15th century, the studio lived through a process of spatial concentration, which led to the construction of a multifunctional university building in the heart of the city. This was the so-called Schools of San Petronio, a building on uh, two floors with uh, stores and a portico uh, and an open lodge above. This building was very long. It corresponds to the great portico known as the Pavaglione today. And it was built thanks to the initiative of the works of San Petronio along the eastern side of the main city church. Teaching and commercial and artisanal activities took place in the various spaces of this elongated portico, which recalled ancient Latin gymnasia. The utilitarian role of the portico, a typically Bolognese structure, recalled here also the portico of the Platonic Academy in Athens, and it served its functions adequately for over a hundred years. At the beginning of the 16th century, this scholastic structure was considered obsolete and it was completely rebuilt during the Counter-Reformation. In the age of uh, uh, great urban renewal under the Pope Pius IV, which brought about both functional and architectural renewal of the central part of the city, the university was also completely transformed. The year 1563 saw the inauguration of the modern Archigymnasio, designed by Antonio Morandi, the Terribilia, according to precise instructions from the scholars at the university. The Archigymnasio is the product of uh, profound changes of the School of San Petronio. Uh, the building consists of a fusion of the pre-existing portico and a new large courtyard. The result is a building whose two wings were reserved respectively for the logistic and the artistic, while the courtyard was surrounded by spaces for multiple purposes. The plan derives from that of the Spanish college, expect for the addition of the long lateral wings. The structure is still axial and has a monumental entry, two staircases at the sides of the large courtyard, and the church of Santa Maria dei Bulgari actually aligned with the entrance. Overall dimensions are greater than uh, that of the Spanish college, and the architectural language is very different, characterized by an extensive use of classical orders in the courtyards. All the wall surfaces of the building are covered with the coats of arms of the professors and their students, often according to a system whereby the professor heraldic symbol was in the center, surrounded by those of the students, as in a theater. During the 18th century, the university suffered from lower enrollments. In this period, the more traditional activities of the studio were joined with new institutions, such as, for instance, the Istituto delle Scienze, the Institute of Sciences founded by the Count Luigi Ferdinando Marsili, who was at the forefront of scientific experimentation in his days. 
Although professional formation of students continued at the university, new lines of intellectual inquiry were undertaken in the two Mercedes academies. The Academies of Science, the Academia delle Scienze, and the Clementine Academy of Art. This brought about the creation of a new cultural and scientific node, no longer in the center of the city, but rather in an area, this area, considered peripheral, the area where we are right now. Marcel, in fact, brought, uh, bought sorry, a Renaissance palace that originally belonged to a cardinal, the Cardinal Poggi, that is the palace where you came this morning and where we are now, and placed there his laboratories and his scientific collections. At Marsili Institute of Sciences, experimentation was at the core of the instruction. This building, Palazzo Poggi, soon became a highly dynamic center filled with scientific collections, which have now become part of uh, uh, our important university museums and a magnet for other cultural organizations such as the great library that is just a uh, few uh, steps from here uh, the teatro comunale hospitals and uh, laboratories the grandiose tower of the specola for astronomical study was built during the first half of the 18th century and has become a symbol of our university. When Napoleon arrived in Bologna, he was very impressed by the Istituto delle Scienze and uh, the Accademia Clementina, and he hoped to support their activities by bringing there all the remaining teaching functions which were still housed in the center of the city. As a result, the Archigenasio was sold, sold to the municipality, and the entire university was moved to the area around these palazzo, this Palazzo Poggi. In 1805, Napoleon's architects designed an ample district, a sort of a campus, destined to become a university city integrating the spaces for the study of botany and agriculture with lecture halls for the different faculties. This gave birth to a modern campus around two Renaissance palaces, the Palazzo Poggi and the pleasure villa of the Bentivoglio family called La Viola, which is today the seat of the university's Office of International relations. This Napoleonic structure, this Napoleonic plan, was unfortunately profoundly changed at the end of the 19th century, about 20 years after the foundation of the new kingdom of Italy, the Regno d'Italia. The project for the development of a modern state university involved a radical alteration of the existing equilibrium between park areas and university buildings. The so-called Capellini plan, named after the rector who wanted to celebrate the eighth centenary of the university, erased the large gardens in favor of the new university buildings, which continued to be developed in the entire northeastern area of the city both inside and outside the old city walls. This process of intense development continued during fascism as well. Mussolini believed in the centrality of the University of Bologna and supported its growth. This period saw the development of new plans for the expansion, uh, for the expansion of the university, be it in the historic center where they used a more traditional architectural language, be it through a multiplication of university structures outside the city walls. The Faculty of Engineering was founded in this period in the area of the hills 
as a true polytechnic nucleus. The principal building of this faculty, designed by Giuseppe Baccaro in 1935, with a great tower for books, a sort of library, is considered one of the most interesting result of Italian rationalism of the interwar period. Then the Second World War. The damage inflicted by the Second World War affected only in part the patrimony of the university. However, the ancient building of the Archigymnasio in the city center was hard hit. It was bombed and partially destroyed in 1944. Its reconstruction completed in a few short months before the war even ended is certainly one of the most fascinating and important examples of restoration of a building as it was and where it was. The expansion of the university continued in an intense fashion after the war. The tumultuous passage to a mass university where the number of students multiplied to over 100,000 in the various faculties brought about in the 70s a new policy of growth of lecture and research structures throughout the city. The difference from the past was that instead of building new buildings, the emphasis has been on restoring and repurposing the existing architectural patrimony, especially that spaces of abandoned monasteries in public hands. In any case, the exponential growth of the number of students in the 80s has led to decentralization. The historic city center was no longer able to absorb all the students, a fourth of which was coming from the region of Romagna to the east of Bologna. Three new university seats in Ravenna, in Forlì, and in Cesena were instituted at this time, and the fourth one, that of Rimini, was added in 2001. A historic process of exporting the Bolognese university model to other urban centers was thus embraced, also with hopes that it would bring about a more balanced and sustainable development of the region as a whole. This process is uh, still underway today, and it has been recognized as the most important national effort at the university decentralization. Once again, urban campuses were privileged, which have helped grow the local economies and contributed to urban renewal. In this case as well, many university structures were realized inside pre-existing historic structures, which were renovated on that occasion. Returning to Bologna, I want to remind you that the most recent chapter regarding the university's architectural policy has to do with the so-called next generation Unibo building plan. This is a very ambitious plan which provides for a widespread recovery of the historical heritage of the university in the city center and the new university settlements in the north and east part of the city, in the areas of uh, Navile, of San Donato, and Cadriano. Uh, these will be most dormitories, laboratories, classrooms, service centers, and new study uh, spaces. In conclusion, well, I hope that you have seen today that Bologna has been and continues to be a great laboratory of urban experiences, which are often directly linked to the university. The tangible signs of those experiences can be found all over the city. I'm sure you will enjoy discovering them by walking under our porticos walkways that can take you in many exciting directions. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Francesco, for this uh, really amazing presentation. And uh, you showed us uh, the, the beautiful <laughs> side of our uh, uh, city and university in the city that I think is one of the most important features of, uh, of Bologna. Uh, in the afternoon, you know, we have a study visit. I would like to thank uh, George and Lorenzo for, organi for organizing this. And we will uh, have the possibility to start to appreciate some of the uh, things that Francesco has showed uh, us uh, uh, now. But I hope you will have some more uh, uh, possibility to just uh, really uh, walk around the city because Bologna is a city that you have to enjoy just walking around and looking at everything is uh, around you. We, we have this uh, beautiful city which is uh, uh, beautiful in every corner so you, you do not have to look for one specific monument but just to enjoy the city. I think this is one of the most uh, important uh, things to do uh, here in Bologna.